Welcome back Team Forever, back again with another video. And in this video, it's a little different. I was gonna get on screen and do this video, but I decided that a voiceover would be way easier for me. Obviously, as you can tell by the title of this video, I, I'm talking about Evolve 115. This is my first Evolve show I ever went to. Everyone on here, pretty much, I'm pretty sure you all know that I'm a wrestling fan. I've been to WWE, plenty of WWE shows. I've been to a few Ring of Honor shows. I've actually been to quite a lot. Started watching Ring of Honor, I think 2014 or 15. I don't really remember, but I'm a, or maybe it was 2013 even. But I went to a few um ROH shows. I've never been to NXT. I really want to go. Um, I actually missed out on one that came not too long ago here to Michigan. But on Twitter, I saw there was um some one of my followers added um that Evolve was promoting DJ Z versus Mustafa Ali as a dream match and like they were like laughing at that and I noticed on the poster it said Livonia Michigan which is pretty much where I live like I'm always in Livonia so I was like Evolve wrestling huh and it's in Livonia like that's so close and it was on a Friday and my first Friday I didn't had off in forever so I'm like I might as well go why not so I posted on Twitter, I'm like, I think I might be going to my first Evolve show. And I definitely ended up going. It was like a week later, I went. Um, I bought a fourth row or a third row seat. It was um, $30. And I bought it at the door. And I had a great time. I would definitely recommend Evolve um, Wrestling for anybody to go to. Is And then, like, I was talking to some people in line because I went by myself. And they were saying it's basically an NXT show. Because there's a few NXT talent, which I guess WWE has a partnership with Evolve Wrestling, which is surprising because Evolve is definitely an indie company. I'm going to tell you why. So first of all, I get there into the parking lot and this building is so small, like literally a bingo hall. Like I've heard of, you know, indie wrestlers wrestling in high school gyms and bingo halls, but I didn't know it was literally still going on. When I go to like Ring of Honor, they're inside like performance centers or rec centers. This was actually inside of a bingo hall. In fact, there was a chandelier hanging, or there was multiple chandeliers hanging from the ceiling and they look like the wrestlers, like I was afraid that those chandeliers would fall because like, the, sh the thing that was holding the chandeliers up, we all know, like, that's really, really small. And a chandelier looks like it holds a lot of weight through that little string. And if they made one wrong move, they could definitely hit that sh those chandeliers. So, I was a little nervous for the chandeliers and for us. <laughs> I'll include a picture of the chandeliers because I, I know I took one on Snapchat. Like, I did a lot for this show on Snapchat. Like, a lot. Like, I think my Snapchat was, like, 10 minutes long of videos but back to the event at hand the poster that i seen had plenty of like there was a, a couple of people from wwe that were going to be on the show i know it was cash is on though fabian eichner street profits montez ford and angelo dawkins and mustafa ali i think that was all of them because i don't think allison k is a part of wwe now, I'm not going to go through every match or anything like that in order because, if I'm honest, there was m more than half the people on this show. I had no clue who they were, but, you know, it was nice to see them wrestle and stuff. Like, I can't remember anybody's name that I didn't know except one person who I will mention in a second. Um, But the matches, I, well, first of all, on the card, though, I did recognize a few people from the indies, like A.R. Fox. I've heard of him. Harlem Bravado. I knew about him. Um, Allison K, obviously, because she was in the Mae Young Classic, and also she was in TNA. Other than that, like, I think that was everybody that I knew. But getting to the show, first of all, it was supposed to start at 8, which I don't like. They, I think they should have started at 7, because at 8, they had internet problems, and they could not start the show on time. It ended up starting at, like, 8.30, if I'm not mistaken, which meant that it ended late. It ended at, like, midnight, which I was not a fan of. But the performers actually made up for the time because every match was good. Every match, the I would say the worst match on the show or the match that I enjoyed the least, which doesn't mean it was a bad match. It's just like someone has to be last. It's like it's like in a race, someone has to be last always. So I would say it was the main event, Fabian Eichner versus Cash Ono. And to be honest, it's mainly because I'm not really... Well, first of all, I'm not into Fabian Eichner at all. Like, he's a nobody on NXT. And then, like, here he's, like, the world champion. It's kind of weird. 
But also, I'm not really a fan of Cash's Ono matches anymore. He used to be one of my favorites. And I think some people might agree with me on this. It's really hard to get into Cash's Ono when he loses every single match. And not only does he lose every single match, at this point, I'm not a fan of his moveset. I used to love him because of his moveset and the knockout, like his big boots and his elbows. Like he used to be knocking people out. But now he's throwing those elbows loud as ever in the beginning of the match, throwing big boots to people's face and they're no selling it. Like he's throwing elbows to the back of people's necks. And there's never even a false, like it's like he does it as a regular move. Like it's not... It's not impactful. He just does it all match long. Like, I'm trying to figure out what is his actual finisher now. Because he hitting his finisher and signature. If his signature is a discus big boot and his finisher is a discus elbow, rolling elbow, he does it all match. Like, he did about 30 big boots and elbows in this match. And never once did I ever think the match was about to end. So, it's hard to get into cash his own, though. And then I'm not into Fabian Eichner at all. So, you know, that match. But it was still a good match. I feel like I just said all negative stuff about their match. <laughs> but I love, I loved every single thing about it. And it was nice to see Cash Zono in person. Because really, as much as I just said about him, those elbows really do look like they hurt and sound like they hurt. And it's just, it's great to see it in person. And he's just so athletic, Cash Zono. Like, honestly. Now, the tag team title match, which the, apparently Street Profits are the evolved tag team champions. They went against the WWN champion J.D. Drake and some other guy named Anthony Henry. And this was probably one of the best matches on the show, too. This was great. Um, the other two guys that aren't Street Profits, they really impressed me, especially J.D. Drake. I'm actually going to look out for J.D. Drake because he was very impressive, and I liked him a lot. And he... JD Drake, if you're saying this, you just gained another fan because he was awesome. The other guy, Anthony Henry, was kind of like a big guy, and he did a moonsault from the top rope, and I really thought he was about to hit the chandelier. Um, but other than that, you know, Street Profits ended up winning. Montez Ford is a clown. He is so entertaining to watch. Um, after they won, and Montez was, you know, clowning around and dancing, he actually took hold of the chandelier. And, like, started spinning it. And <laughs> it was so funny. But I got kind of scared that it was going to fall. Because he was really, really turning that chandelier after it had been steel for the entire show. But, actually, there was a couple people that were from Detroit that actually touched the chandelier on their way to the ring. I guess for, like, good luck. <laughs> Speaking of people being from Detroit, the last thing I really want to talk about when it comes to the wrestling is, well, actually, no, not the last thing, but there was um a couple of hometown people that were from Detroit. They got a lot of loud pops. It was nice seeing this one guy. He looked like he was about my age, and he probably wrestled a lot. I don't know, but his family was there, and it just I could tell how excited he was and excited they were that he was wrestling. He took pictures with them and stuff, so I thought that was really, really nice. But the main thing to talk about from, oh, and Allison Kay. Oh, actually, I forgot to talk about DJ Z and Mustafa Ali. Um, So, apparently, that match that was supposed to be a dream match, but, I mean, I don't think anybody really considers it a dream match, but I also, I do like both of them. But the reason why I think it was promoted as a dream match is because they came up together. They've been wrestling together um, multiple times, I guess, because that's what they said. Like, somebody that was sitting next to me said it, so I don't even know if this is true. But something about DJ Z... And I guess Mustafa Ali has a match of Survivor Series because they said something about it. I didn't know about it, so I just knew for a fact he was, well, not for a fact, but I just figured he was going to win this match because he's dressed in the Survivor Series really soon. But DJ Z, Zima Ion, one thing about him is when he first came to TNA, he was literally my favorite wrestler at one point. Like, I thought DJ or Zima Ion was so cool. I loved his little pose that he does with the Z because it just reminds me of me because my name is Lorenzo. And he had cool hair and cool ring gear. And his moveset was great. And he was, like, Filipino, I think. So he was, like, a minority. I just loved Zima Ion. He was my favorite wrestler. And when I used to hang out with my friends and I used to say Zima Ion was my favorite wrestler, they would think that I was joking because it was, like, Zima Ion. What? Who? Like... This loser from TNA, he had just started. He he had this little gimmick where it was like he thought he was better than people, but he always lost. So nobody really thought 
that he was really my favorite wrestler, but he really was. But obviously, like, I stopped watching TNA, and I fell off to see my eye on. Like, I had no clue that he cut his hair. When he came out with a bald head and also with, like, pink nail polish on his hair, I'm like, what? Like, he was, like, completely different, but his ring work was still great, and he still was cool. He came out with, like, a light-up jacket and stuff like that, and light-up face mask and all this stuff. And then Mustafa Ali came out with, like, pretty much the same thing. It was really cool to see. And then their match was actually really good, but I do think, well, I don't say anything bad about it. It was just, it was just, like, it was a lot of, let's do this, a whole bunch of stuff, then stop and look at each other so the fans can clap. Like, that's the only bad thing I could say about it, is they did stop a lot for us to clap. But it's a really good match, and Mustafa Ali ended up winning. Um, I really wish that I would have saw his reverse 450, but he didn't do that. He ended up winning with, I think, a roller, but I might be wrong. After the match, they embraced. Zimayan said he's the next, uh, said that Mustafa Ali is the next Cruiserweight champion, which I would love to see, because I am a fan of Mustafa Ali. <laughs> And the last thing I want to talk about is the absolute war that went on with A.R. Fox and Austin Theory. Austin Theory is probably one of my new favorite wrestlers uh, or that I didn't know of before. He definitely gained a new fan, and I definitely will be looking out for Austin Theory. Um, so basically what went on was there's a fatal four-way with two people who came out with the same music, so I was kind of confused. But uh, apparently they both go to A.R. Fox's wrestling school. So, one of them, I think one of them won. No, they both lost. But after the match, AR Fox came out with a few more people from his crew. And I called them the gang because it was literally so many of them. And they were so happy and clapping and stuff. You know, they embraced. Like, it was a, a, it was their crew. And then this guy came out, AR, or what's his name? Austin Theory and Pris- Priscilla Kelly, which I remember her from the Mae Young Classic. And they cut a promo on the crew. So I called it Gang Wars. Because <laughs> it was like it was Austin's gang, which it was only two of them. But I just thought it was funny. Versus AR Fox's gang. And they were just going at it. And the two girls were going at it because it was girls in the crew. And then, like, I guess they, AR Fox and Austin Theory had a match. And. <laughs> The match was so fast, and AR Fox lost, like, really, really quick because of the girls' interference. But then uh, the crew got mad, and, you know, uh, AR Fox cut a promo on wanting another fight. He didn't want to wrestle Austin Theory. He wanted to fight. And this happened in the middle of the show. So uh, Austin Theory said, no, 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 blah, blah, blah. And then basically it ended with AR Fox saying he will put the school on the line. And then, like, the crew was like, whoa, 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 no, no, no. So I called it, like, if Austin Theory won, he got to take over A.R. Fox's gang. That's how I saw it. So basically, he would give up the school, and the school would become Austin Theories. So they promoted it as an unsanctioned fight after the main event. So it went on after the world title match, the Evolve Championship match. So... The match was my first unsanctioned match I've ever seen. And it was very hardcore to watch so close. AR Fox is absolutely crazy. He put on a performance of, like, the best indie performance. Like, he, if he didn't do some of the stuff he did in his past, like, he would be a star, in my opinion, in WWE or TNA. But, um... That's neither here nor there. If y'all know what AR Fox did in this past, then y'all know. If y'all don't, then, um, okay. Um, but it, it was very, very brutal. The only weapon that they actually used, though, was a ladder, which is very, very random to me that the only weapon you use is a ladder. You would think it would be, like, a chair or, like, a pipe or something like that, but they actually used ladders. Like, I think they used three ladders. There was some pretty brutal spots. AR Fox is amazing to watch, um live and Austin Theory is also very very good. He kind of reminds me of a way better Mike Canellis, Mike Bennett. Um Austin Theory I think is going to be a big star and I definitely think he's going to be in WWE or TNA really really soon. Basically the match ended with Priscilla Kelly getting involved again, but for ma- majority of this match AR Fox got beat up. Like he was getting taken out by uh Austin Theory. Austin Theory was in control majority of this match. But 
And the end, the girl came out from A.R. Fox's crew to take out Priscilla Kelly, who kept getting involved. And A.R. Fox ended up winning with, I don't really remember what he ended up winning with. But A.R. Fox ended up winning. He got to keep his little gang. And they all walked around, you know, they came out and they embraced, you know. It was really, really nice. So that was cool. Um, Yeah, that's about it for the show. Um, now I'll talk about what happened after so the show. So after the show, all the wrestlers were really, really nice. Some of them stuck around. And, you know, they were just taking pictures and talking to fans and um, signing stuff. So me personally, I saw Zima Ayan, who used to be my favorite wrestler, as I keep saying. I used to, like, want to be like Zima Ayan because he did this little pose with the little Z, which was my thing. Because, you know, that's my name, Lorenzo, and I like the little, like, if I, like, I like his pose, how he does the Z with his hands. So, I went to Zima Ion's line, and, you know, I talked to him for a little bit, and I asked him, was he selling anything? Because since he used to be one of my favorite wrestlers, I really wanted to buy something from him. I didn't want to just get anything, like, you know, get something for free. So, he said, yeah, man, I got uh, shirts, and I got 8 by 10 and like a poster. Okay, a poster would be cool. Let me get his poster. Because, you know, I got a few posters on my wall. And if I can get a signed poster by Zima Ion, that'd be pretty cool. So, I paid for his little 8x10. And he asked me what was my name so that he can write it. And I said Lorenzo. But I was like, you can just put Zoe. And that's what he did. And then he started calling me Zoe. Like, what's up, Zoe? Blah, 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 blah. We kept talking for a while. And then he um I asked for a picture. He said, yeah. And for the picture, he put his arm uh, on my shoulder, his hand on my shoulder and put his little you know, the peace sign up, and I was like, uh, can you actually do your little pose, you know, his, his, what is it called, his taunt, I guess, his Z, and he was like, oh yeah, hell yeah, and then he did his little Z, and we took a picture, and, um, I don't know how it came out, because the girl that took it, like, she, as soon as she gave him back the phone, she left, and, you know, he was like, thanks, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Now, I don't like the way I look in the picture, but, you know, that's how most people say, you know, they don't like the way they look. But I guess it's fine. And he did his little post. So it was nice meeting Zima Ayan. used to be my favorite wrestler. Then I ended up meeting um, Alyssa K from Detroit. Um, she was really, really cool. I was kind of awkward. I didn't really know what to say to her because I never really watched her. I told her I liked her inside the mix match challenge. And I was like, oh, wait. And she was like, oh, thanks. I'm like, oh, wait, no. The mate. And then I forgot the name of it. She's like, mate, you're a classic. It's okay. I do what you bet. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. And I didn't really have nothing for her to sign because the two things that I bought, which I didn't even show y'all, is um, two. I, actually, I'll talk about that later. But anyway, I said, can you sign my ticket? And I, I knew I wasn't going to keep this ticket. I just, you know asked her to sign it just because and she did which was nice i think she signed with ak-47 though so i got i don't know if she go by that or something i'm not sure but then we took a picture and she was way nicer with the picture well not nicer but she said um make sure it's, it came out right and you know we made sure it cha- came out right because same thing the person took it and then just went on and I made sure it turned out right, but then I realized I still had my glasses on, so I was like, can I take it without my glasses on? She's like, yeah, and we did that, so it was good and everything. I, I had to pay her $5 for a picture, which was fine. You know, I wanted to support her, too, because I like her, but um, last two things I bought, because if you buy a ticket, you get a $5 merch credit, and if you buy first row, you get $10 merch credit, which is really nice of Evolve to do that. Because some, uh, you get money towards merch, which some of the DVDs cost $5. So if you get a $10 merch credit, you can pretty much get two $5 DVDs for free because you got the credit. But I got a $10 merch credit and I bought um two PWG DVDs and they were $15 each. So, um, you know, I ended up spending like... $25. So I got a $5 merch credit actually. Um so yeah, it was pretty cool. Um the two DVDs I got, I'll post a picture of them. I think it's called Prince and one called Only Kings Understand Each Other. Only Kings Understand Each Other. Um yeah, I got PWG because that's like I don't really want an evolve like that was literally my first evolve show I ever watched, so or seen, so I'm not really familiar with it at all. So I got PWG. I looked at the back and I saw the cards and you know, I can't wait to watch. Um, also, I saw A.R. Fox, you know, walking around with some girls, and he just, to be honest, A.R. Fox seemed like he was just kind of out of it, so I didn't really, my phone was dead, so I couldn't ask for a picture, but 
Like, it was kind of weird because I said, hey, what's up, AR Fox? And he said a whole bunch of mumbling stuff that I could barely understand. Then he said, thanks, man. And I'm like, what is <laughs> What did you just say thanks for? All I said was, hey, what's up, man? But, you know, whatever. AR Fox was cool. And Zima Ion was extremely cool. And so was Cash Zono. Um, I cannot wait go to go to another Evolve show. It, it gave me indie feel. Like, it's not like a Ring of Honor show. It's way more lax there. Like, everyone's cool as ever. I loved it there. I cannot wait to go back. And I would recommend it for anybody, even if you have to travel. If you're a wrestling fan, go see Evolve. Evolve Wrestling was really, really fun. And apparently last time, like, Zack Sabre Jr. was there for, like, some progress show. And I really love Zack Sabre Jr., so I would love to see him wrestle. Sorry this video is so long, but I just wanted to share my experience there i hope you guys like this video if you guys want me to do more videos on wrestling just let me know because i have so many dvds i can review or i can review like um what's coming up survivor series or all of those pay-per-views that just went on may young classic uh mix i don't watch mix match challenge but you know any of that stuff so just let me know leave a comment enjoy your day until next time catch you later